Welcome back my friends. Today I'm showing you how to create such a chart. In fact, we're actually creating a better version of this chart. And just in case you're not familiar with a chart like this, let me say that this is basically nothing but a two-dimensional histogram. On the y-axis we can see the sale price of houses and on the x-axis we can see the area of the house's property. And this chart now shows you how combinations of sale price and lot area are distributed. And here you can see that mostly all of the data is concentrated in one or two hexagons. That's pretty uninformative. We will fix that. But what we will also fix is even worse. The y-axis labels are terrible. They use scientific notation. Uh, that's not pretty at all, so we should get started on this right away. We start by grabbing the data. In this case, this is the AIMS data set from the model data package. This is a large data set and it could use nicer column labels because it uses a lot of capital letters and so on. So let's fix those by using clean names from Janitor. Now the column names are all lowercase, which is much nicer for programming. Then let us select the two variables that are of interest to us and save these into a new data set. Now we are ready to send this data set to ggplot and on the x-axis we'll have lot area, on the y-axis we'll have sale price, and then we simply add a GM hex layer. This already gives us our first chart. And because I want to have a border for each of the hexagons, I changed the color to gray 40. Next, let us make this plot a little bit nicer by adding a fee minimal layer where we increase the base size so that everything becomes larger and therefore more legible. And we change the font to Source Sense Pro, which I think is a nicer font. Additionally, we can tweak the theme a little bit more by moving the legend to the top. I simply prefer this location, even if this is not a nice look right now, and we will fix the color bar in a second. For now, let us get rid of the panel grid minor so that we have less grid lines. I prefer this look because I don't want to have that many grid lines. It's just too much clutter. Now, to fix the legend, we need the guides layer where we change the legend of the fill aesthetic by using the guide color bar function. And in there, we change the bar width to 10 centimeters. If you are unfamiliar with tweaking the legend like this, then I have a video for you. Right about now, there should be a notification popping up somewhere in the right corner. So check out this video if you want to learn more about tweaking your legend. Now, what our chart desperately needs is nicer labels. Right now, all it uses are the column names as the axis labels, and this is not nice. You should change this in any chart you create, or at least in any chart that you want to show to other people. So let's set the X and Y labels. Here I have removed the Y label because I will just put this information into the title. And I also want to change the color bar label to something like number of houses. Also, I want to change the direction of the colors to make the larger numbers correspond to darker colors and not the other way around. We can do this by adding scale fill distiller and setting the direction to one. And if you're unfamiliar with this layer, then oh boy, I have another video for you. You can find that video by clicking on the notification that should pop up right about now. Go check that video out if you want, I will wait. And if you come back, we can finish this chart here. Because basically right now we have finished the first chart that you saw in this video. And now it comes time to fix what is wrong. The first thing that is wrong is that all of these houses are concentrated in a couple of hexagons only. So basically we barely use most of the plotting area. This is a typical application for logarithmic scales. So let's make the x-axis logarithmic by using scale functions. First, we transform the x-axis by adding a scale x log 10 layer. This will transform the chart like this. And we can do the same thing with the y-axis by using the scale y log 10 layer. Now we can see that the plotting area is used better and more hexagon have a nicer filling. Especially in the color bar, you can see that the dark colors don't go all the way up to 400. So this is how you can tell that the data is spread out more nicely in this chart. But the axis labels are still terrible. Oh hi there! Let me just pop in right here before we fix the axis of our charts to remind you to hit that like button if you like this video. This means a lot to me, so thank you for your support and let's get back to the video. Okay, we're back. Where were we? Ah yeah, we wanted to fix the scientific notation in our chart. It's just plain ugly and we can't have that in our chart, can we? That's why we're changing the labels argument in the scale function and set that argument to a function that changes the labels. This did the job quite nicely, but we should probably elaborate on the code a bit more. Let's have a look at what this label number function does. Because this is a bit tricky at first. 
One of the things that has confused me a couple of times when I was first using this was why would I need these extra parentheses here? The thing is, the labels argument expects a function. Well, you could also use a vector of labels here as well, but then you will always have to make sure that your vector corresponds to the labels that ggplot shows for you in the coordinate system, and that's just prone to error. A safer way is to pass a function to the labels argument that can turn any number into a nice label. And you might think that this is what the label number function does, but it's not. If you look at the code of this function in the last line, you will see that the label number function returns a function and not a number. So it doesn't do any converting text to number. But what the label number function actually returns is the thing that will do the actual transforming for us. So you could say that the label number function is the generator for other function that do what you want. And this is why you always need these parentheses here. This ensures that label number actually generates a function and this function is then passed to the labels argument in the scale function. And for all kind of use cases, the scales package has a different label function generator. You see, we have used label number on the x axis and we could use the same thing on the y axis too. But since we are actually talking about prices here, we could check if the scales package has a better label function for us in store. And since all of those functions start with label underscore, we can just scroll through all of them. Here we see label percent, and this is a common function that we use all the time when we want to use percent labels in our plots. But right now this wouldn't make any sense. But what might make more sense is label dollar. So let's use that. And then you see that the y-axis labels are all immediately formatted into dollar labels. And another thing that you may notice that the dollar labels on the y-axis use a comma to indicate the big mark of the numbers now. But the x-axis doesn't do that. So let's change this by having a look at the documentation of the label number function. And in there, we can see that the big mark in label number by default is set to a white space. So let's change this in our function so that we use a comma there too. So yeah, this looks nicer now, doesn't it? Let me know in the comments if you agree. And with that, I hope that you've learned a couple of new skill sets to make nicer plots and that you understand the logic behind the underlying scale functions better now. And if you want to learn more about ggplot, then maybe this video here is something for you. There, I will show you how to change the colors of your ggplot plot so that you don't always have to use the default colors. Or maybe if you don't want to learn something about ggplot but about shiny, then have a look at this video here. This will show you how to modularize your shiny apps. In any case, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.